waves together strong. This is a famous line in the Planet of, A Planet of Apes movie series. Uh, with these words, Caesar encapsulates the theme of unity and strength through solidarity among apes. Today, I will continue reading chapter 3, where we find people from diverse backgrounds united for the shared purpose of building the wall of Jerusalem. Consider this. They were the same people before the coming of Nehemiah, but they were powerless without any hints of so that, uh, solidarity. Then, something triggered them to come together and cooperate on a large scale with great degree of flexibility. And then, just as apes together strong, they showed people together strong. We're going to read the text and I'll ask you to ponder what created unity in the diversity. Nehemiah 3, 15 to 32. The fountain gate was repaired by Shalan, son of Kol Hose, ruler of the district of Mizpah. He rebuilt it, roofing it over and putting its doors and bolts and bars in place. He also repaired the wall of the pool of Siloam by the king's garden as far as the steps going down from the city of David. Beyond him, Nehemiah son of Azbuk, ruler of a half-district of Beth Zor, made repairs up to a point opposite the tombs of David, as far as the artificial pool and the house of the heroes. Next to him, the repairs were made by the Levites under Rehom son of Bani. Beside him, Hashabiah, ruler of half the district of Kaliah, carried out repairs for his district. Next to him, the repairs were made by their fellow Levites under Binui, son of Henadad, ruler of the other half district of Kela. Next to him, Etzer, son of Jeshua, ruler of Mitzpah, repaired another section, from a point facing the ascent to the armory as far as the angle of the wall. Next to him, Baruch, son of Zabai, zealously repaired another section, from the angle to the entrance of the house of Eliashab, the high priest. Next to him, Merimoth, son of Uriah, the son of Hakaz, repaired another section, from the entrance of Eliashab's house to the end of it. The repairs next to him were made by the priests from the surrounding region. Beyond them, Benjamin and Hashub made repairs in front of their house, and next to them, Azariah, son of Maaseah, the son of Ananiah, made repairs beside his house. Next to him, Binui, son of Henadad, repaired another section from Azariah's house to the angle and the corner. And Palal, son of Uzai, worked opposite the angle and the tower projecting from the upper palace near the court of the guard. Next to him, Padiah, son of Parash, and the temple servants living on the hill of Ophel, made repairs up to a point opposite the water gate toward the east and the projecting tower. Next to them, the men of Tekoa repaired another section from the great projecting tower to the wall of Ophel. Above the horse gate, the priests made repairs, each in front of his own house. Next to them, Zadok, son of Emer, made repairs opposite his house. Next to him, Shemaiah, son of Shechaniah, the guard at the east gate, made repairs. Next to him, Hananiah, son of Shelemiah, and Hanun, the sixth son of Zalaf, repaired another section. Next to them, Meshulam, son of Barakiah, made repairs opposite his living quarters. Next to him, Malkijah, one of the goldsmiths, made repairs as far as the house of the temple servants and the merchants, 
opposite the inspection gate and as far as the room above the corner. And between the room above the corner and the sheep gate, the goldsmiths and merchants made repairs. Today, we continue our journey through chapter 3 of Nehemiah, where we witness a remarkable display of unity among diversity. Uh, picture this. These people were the same individuals who, before Nehemiah's arrival, lived side by side, yet remained disconnected. They were present, but powerless. Then something happened that brought them together and inspired them to collaborate on a grand scale. So my question is again, what turned a fractured community into a cohesive team capable of rebuilding the city's wall within 52 days. What was the driving force behind this unity amidst such diversity? My answer is that they were not just fixing the wall, but they were rebuilding their lives. Several years ago, there was a TV show, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. In the show, a team of designers and contractors rebuild the house of needy families. Often, these families have faced significant hardships or challenges. In the show, they weren't just fixing a house, but rebuilding the life. Likewise, in chapter 3 of Nehemiah, people weren't just rebuilding a wall, but they were restoring a nation's identity, purpose, and pride. Just as each episode of Extreme Makeover contained amazing stories of restoring a family, people rebuilding the wall intuitively knew that they were part of a great, great narrative of restoring a nation. Moreover, in rebuilding the wall, they also participated in a grand narrative of God's promise to give the land to their ancestors, Abraham. In other words, they were not just participating in the stories of their meeting their near needs, but they were part of God's great narrative that flows throughout the Bible. To put them together, what God did through Nehemiah was to meet the needs of the people, restoration of the nation. But he used people's needs to leverage their spirituality. They were not just working to meet their needs, but they were participating in God's grand narrative of salvation and restoration of His creation. When their needs and spirituality were connected, people joined together to build a wall because they knew that they're part of something that is greater than themselves or even greater than their nation. People together strong because their needs and spiritually, spirituality got connected. As we drew this message to close, I invite you to reflect on these questions. First, think of the needs of the people around you. What are the fears and hopes of these people? What are their needs? Second, how would you and your faith community serve their needs? And last, how would you use the needs to leverage their sense of being participants of God's grand narrative? I encourage you to take a moment and now to pray. Ask God to open your eyes to see His restorative work happening around you. That in the quiet of your heart, offer yourselves to be used by Him in a divine mission of rebuilding and restoring lives. Let us pray. Father, we just understood that you're God who restores lives. And I just ask you to open our eyes to see your work of restoration and salvation around us. Let us see the needs of the people around us. 
let us understand their fears and hopes so that me, my family, and my community of faith may come to them and serve their needs. But at the same time, let us use our service to meet their needs, to leverage their spirituality and sense of being participants of God's great narrative of salvation. Let the needs of the people with the spirituality of being the people of God so that they have the courage and strength to stand up and join together for building up your kingdom. In Christ's precious name, amen. <laughs>